Welcome to 805 Focus. I'm Dr. Cinder Sinclair with Nonprofit Connect, and we will be bringing you the latest on your favorite nonprofits. So get ready to be inspired. Our special guest today is Nikki Parr, and Nikki is the CEO of Women's Economic Ventures. Welcome, Nikki. Thank you. Thanks for being with us. It's great to be here. Oh, gosh. You folks are doing important work over there, and you're constantly evolving. And uh, so we want to hear what you're up to these days. Yeah, well, um, Weaver's been around for 30 years. Um, we Very support nice. women entrepreneurs, um, but we've also started evolving to supporting uh, a lot more minority-owned business owners, um, Spanish-speaking business owners, and also branching out into financial education and financial literacy. Wow, you are really branching out. Because you didn't used to do all of that. Right. Yeah, it used to be just very um, focused on small business support for women entrepreneurs. So it seems like maybe when you look back over those 30 years, you've grown very organically responding to the needs of your clients and the community. Yeah, absolutely. And and particularly in the last few years, we've recognized that um, – Having Spanish language programs is really important for the demographic of the community that we live in, and, and all of our programs are now offered in English and Spanish. That's great. So you serve um, all of Santa Barbara County? Yep, okay. South and North County, um, and we also go down into Ventura County as oh, well. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. That's great. Mm -hmm. So do you have um, offices in those Yeah, uh, we places? have uh, an office in Camarillo mm. and an office in Santa Barbara. Um, but we're also running courses... Um, at remote locations. So we run courses in Santa Maria, Santa Paula, Oxnard, and then we have a lot of online uh, things that are available too. Oh, yeah. So the online thing, I think, would make it much more accessible for some people anyway, depending on their schedule and their yeah. geography. Yeah, particularly for women. You know, th we need the flexibility Juggling. in our lives with all the different things that we're balancing. So what really helped, ironically, was during the pandemic. Um, we had yeah. um, had an intention of, of having more available online, and the universe gave us the standing marching orders to do that. So, yeah. so it really helped catalyze our online um, course availability. That's great. So is Weave only for women? No. Um, no, we we're really happy to have men in our programs as well. Um, and again, particularly over the last few years, um, we've seen a lot of Hispanic couples coming to take our programs oh. and, yeah, a, a lot more women. But I'll still say that 81% of our clients are women. Sure. Yeah. That's cool. Couples come in. Yeah, yeah. What yeah. a great idea. Yeah, well, if they own a business together and then they can go through the program together and then there's no convincing one or the other. You know, you, you yeah. get to listen and be educated together. So so tell us more about, you know, the services, the programs themselves. If a person says, oh, gosh, I'm kind of interested in maybe starting a business or, I don't know, they just have an idea, they yeah. want to explore, how, 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 what do they do first? Yeah, I mean, we recognize that that's a question a lot of people have. Mm -hmm. um, they have a dream of starting a business but don't really know where to start or even if it's viable. So we have a class called Explore, which is Exploring Entrepreneurship. It's a four-week class, and it really helps you kind of understand, are you ready, and is your business concept ready? Uh, at the end of that course, if you decide yes, you can go on to uh, what we call our flagship program, the Smart Entrepreneurial Training Program, um, and that will really give you through all of the details of starting and running a business. That's a 14-week course, so we get into quite a lot of detail. And at the end, you'll have written a business plan. You'll be able to pitch your business. It's just your, it should be your North Star, and then you can launch. Yeah. yeah. So, so if a person has just a, an idea, I'd like to start my own business, but I don't know exactly what that Explore program might be a good place to start. Totally. Yeah, it, it really is. And it, it just, it helps you put your passion down on paper and monetize it. You know, a lot of people may think, that they want to start a food business without really realizing all of the costs involved and how much you need to sell to break even. Is it going to be profitable? So we would much rather see you answer those questions up front before you've spent any money. And, you know, as opposed to after when you're like, oh, I didn't think this through properly. <laughs> Gosh. So do you have people come in with one idea and then they take that Explorer class and they go, oh, my. I think I would rather do 
something different. Yeah, totally. And I, and that's a really good decision to take. I mean, we're just we're here, we're here to support whatever the evolution of somebody's dream is and to really level the playing field in making that happen. Not everybody has access to the support and the resources to start a business. So that's really our role as we see it. Yeah, and you know, I have heard from many, many women business owners in this community about how we've helped them put their business together and they're very successful Mm -hmm. because you go about it in a very planful way. Yes, yes. That to us, that's really important is to put the steps in place, follow the steps, be coached, be open to coaching, right? Mm. That's an important part too. Um, We're really intentional about the people that we bring in as instructors and advisors. They're amazing experienced they know what it is to run a small business and so they will provide the guidance and if you just listen (laughs) 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 and also really have a good sense of financials and marketing and and, you know those are the key areas that we try to focus on because those are the key areas that most businesses need help with so uh, do you have a story that you could share with us about someone maybe that wanted to start a business or and was successful or Yeah, I mean, we, um, you know, obviously we're we're helping around 600 business owners each year. Um, 600 business owners every year. Mm -hmm. So 600 people, more or less, come in at least wanting to explore, if not actually jumping in and... yeah. 600. That's a lot. It is a lot. It is a lot. And yeah, I mean, you know, just one of those that I can think of... um, she, she has a, a business, um, it's kind of a traditionally STEM business. She's a, a woman working in the construction industry, oh. started during COVID, um, actually, sorry, during the, um, just after the Thomas fire and, you know, has grown to bring on something like 13 employees. Um, she's wow. taken multiple programs. She's taken our QuickBooks coaching program. You know, she's she's just, like I said, following the steps and taking the advice and growing her business and, and employing people in this community. And that's that's phenomenal. So it's giving her, um, you know, her own business and her own business success. But she's also able to spread that into the community through employing others. Gosh, that's a great story. Mm-hmm. And so um, financial literacy, I think you're branching out into that these days. Maybe you could tell us about that. Yeah. So there's a little bit of a personal connection there for me. So I started at Weave um, shortly after the Thomas fire and the, the debris flow, okay. working with businesses that had been directly impacted. So that, you know, we had a lot of shutdown during that time. Um, and there was emergency funding that was available. So I was helping mm-hmm. the businesses connect to that funding and kind of try and, you know, deal with the, the crisis that uh-huh. was um, ahead of them. Um, but while I was doing that work, I really noticed that business owners um, necessar- didn't really have the reserves, the cash in the bank, the understanding of the mm-hmm. financials mm-hmm. that would really help them in these types of s- unforeseen situations. And so we started to create a lot more intentional programming around financial education for small business owners Um, But also looking at your own finances as an individual, because if you're a small business owner, it's just you. You know, how you handle your personal finance is going to be pretty similar to how you handle your business finance. Absolutely. So it it has evolved from that. We were able to bring on a financial education manager. So that's and she's bilingual and, and she's incredibly passionate about this work. So she has helped us build out this program in a really meaningful way, partnering with other organizations, other nonprofits in the community and really building um, a, a sort of a network of, of people that are really care about financial education for adults. And it, it's very successful, yeah. Wow. You know, and I remember um, Marsha Bailey, the founder, mm-hmm. really she wanted to start this because she felt that if women understood math and financial issues – that they could have more control of their life. And so how wonderful that it's evolved into this. Yeah, there's, there's so much around confidence and um, yeah. and your finances and, you know, being able to talk to women in a way where there's no shame, there's no, um, you know, what do you mean you don't understand this? You know, we, we really make everything very accessible 
and give people the confidence around their finances. And then once that's in place, you feel that anything's possible, right? You can set your goals, you can achieve them. You're, you feel much more in control of your future. So that, that is our intention. Yeah, that, that part is really, really important. So what would you say to a woman who may be watching this, um, who maybe she's thinking, gosh, me, a business owner? I don't, I don't know that I could do such a thing. So she lacks confidence. Mm -hmm. um, what would you say to someone like that? I'd say it's a really common feeling. Um, even among business owners that have been in business for several years, they remember those initial feelings of, can I really do this? And so I think there's a, there's this sense of leaning into that and mm -hmm. finding your partner to work with. And when I say partner, I mean an organization like Weave that mm -hmm. can really, we've, we know the territory. And, you know, we've, got, we've had proven success over 30 years. I right. think 76% of businesses that have worked with us over the last five years see an increase in their revenue by over 65%. Golly. I mean, it's proven. So if you want to be successful, it doesn't matter if you're a little nervous, if you lack the confidence, come anyway. The classes are designed to provide a social support. Mm -hmm. You know, you're with other people that are in the same boat as you. You'll forge the connections. You can have mastermind groups together and stay in touch once you mm -hmm. finish with the weave class. But, you know, we know what it's like and we're geared towards addressing that mm -hmm. and, and kind of managing you through that. And so uh, you said you collaborate with all different nonprofits. Maybe you can talk about that. Yeah. Um, again, through the financial literacy work um, with organizations like the Housing Authority, even with Teddy Bear Cancer Foundation, oh. we've just we've collaborated with them to um, provide the financial education training to their clients because they recognize that it could be really helpful in the circumstances they're in. And, and we're really thrilled to be able to work with other nonprofits in that way. That's great. So, I mean, I could even see someone who doesn't necessarily have the idea that they want to start a business, but they know that they need to have a higher level of financial understanding. They, can they come to that? Yeah, absolutely. We have financial empowerment classes all the time. Um, and yeah, details are on our website about that. Um, they're usually, you know, they're not a huge lift. It, it could be maybe two or three evenings or a Saturday morning boot uh -huh. camp. But okay. we make it really, really accessible. We also have a, a Spanish language self-study class. So you can just be online and, and oh. take that class yourself. So that is great. Yeah. Yeah. So that would, Yeah. I could see that being very beneficial to yeah. people who might live quite a ways away or maybe they have a very busy schedule yeah. or that sort of thing. Yeah, exactly. That is great. Well, let's see. Do you think, I f I'm feeling that we're so lucky <laughs> to have Weave in our community and for 30 years. Mm -hmm. Do you think that other communities are as lucky as we are to have something like this? Well, we think we're pretty special. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I would agree. We hear all the time how much people love Weave. Um, but the good news is that there are there are many organizations um, who are addressing small business support. So even within Santa Barbara and Ventura County, there's SCORE and then there's the EDC, which is a small business development center. Oh. And I know that you had SCORE on yeah. your show recently. Yeah, right. um, but we also are a part of a women's business center network, which is a national group of oh. Um, support centers geared towards supporting women in small business, and those are available in most regions. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's great. Well, we're so, like I say, fortunate to have you, and, and I have so enjoyed watching it, your organization develop over 30 years. I didn't realize it had been that long. That's quite a while. Yeah. Yeah. It's, well, Marsha gave us a legacy, and we didn't just keep she? honoring that. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you're a 501c3 nonprofit. Mm -hmm. yep. I'm sure that you uh, welcome donations. Very much. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's another thing that people don't necessarily realize about Weave. I think they see that we're connected to business, so they think Ooh. that we're a for-profit, but we're right, not. Right. Yeah. We're a nonprofit. Um, we have to fundraise quite a bit of our money that we're not getting through um, government grants. Um, mm -hmm. So, yes, we welcome Donors, um, we have something called the League of Extraordinary Women, which is a donor circle 
that starts at a thousand dollars per year or above. Um, yeah, but you know, we'll we'll take as little or as much as you can spare. <laughs> the League of Extraordinary Women. What a what a great idea that is. Well, who wouldn't want to be in that? Right. And, and we're very happy to have men in it as well. So. Yeah. Oh, so men are also welcome Absolutely. to that. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So a person can go on your website. They can hit that Donate Now button. Mm -hmm. Yep. And you will be very grateful for that. Yeah. And they can um, find out more about your programs, how they might stick their toe in the water or jump right in with both feet, whichever they feel yeah, exactly. And, and, you know, for existing business owners as well, we get a lot of people coming to us that, um, you know, they may have been in business for a while, but they want to shift their business model or they want to expand or they know that they need to change something. So we have coaching programs that can really support people in making the kind of the transitions and the pivots and setting new goals. Uh, and we also do funding. We have, you know, we, we're able to fund um, loans and we give out grants from time to time as well. So we've given out $5 million in loans and grants in the last five years. Gosh. Yeah. Five million in the last five years. Mm -hmm. So talk a little bit more about that program. Gee. Um, yeah. So I'm, in a way, it's been tied to the pandemic and the disasters. Oh. You know, there was a lot of emergency funding that came in to support small business during that time, which is great. Sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's we've had probably over two million dollars of grant funding, um, and then two million dollars of emergency loans as well, and three million dollars of emergency loans. Yeah, it's again, I don't think people realize that we provide that role in the community as well. So, can a person find out more about that on your website, or yeah, yeah, everything's on the website. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. In this day and age. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, all right. So we have just a little bit of time, and I'm wondering if you have any additional message that you'd like to share with our audience. Hmm. I mean, I think we've done a really good job of, of covering everything. Um, gosh, I, I just really encourage people to get involved and learn about the work we do. I mm -hmm. think, you know, we've often heard that we're the best kept secret. We yeah. don't want to be that. There are so many businesses in this community that have um, benefited from Weeb's work. But again, it's not just about small business. It's about financial literacy as well. Um, and we see the two going hand in hand. Yeah. And recognizing that, you know, at different periods of your life, you may want to try different things. And to know that this resource is, is available to support even just exploring an idea. You know. Yeah. yeah. So with the um, maybe with the financial literacy, but somewhere in there, you also probably teach about technology if somebody needs to increase their knowledge about how to that's I don't a know. great point yeah we um, we've been doing a lot of work around digital equity and digital literacy um, during again during the pandemic we recognized that a lot of businesses needed to be online um, in order to keep going right when mm -hmm. everything was shut down and it's a really important avenue for businesses to have a web presence mm -hmm. to um, have social media presence and we have some great courses that are available that that teach specifically that English and Spanish as well yes so, yes yeah. yeah that is wonderful mm -hmm. oh Nikki I'm so glad that yeah I'm you... glad you brought that up <laughs> uh -huh. I'm glad you came on our program and thank you so much for your work and hooray for you for Stepping up to take the CEO <laughs> position there. Yeah, thank you. No, it's, it's, it's a real privilege. Um, we do incredible work in the community. I feel the responsibility of, of um, keeping that going for this organization. And uh, I'm excited. There's always something new. Yes, and I have a feeling you can handle whatever comes. <laughs> thank <you. laughs> well, thank you again for all your good work and for coming on our show to tell us about it. I really appreciate it, Cinder. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm. And thanks for joining us on 805 Focus, and we'll see you next time. <laughs> <laughs>